Hello, Fiber friends, and welcome back. It's been a long time since we've chatted together. My name is Kristen, and I love spinning um, and knitting and anything that has to do with wool and fiber and all the things. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Stitched Vintage, same as YouTube. Um, and this is just a little vlog that I started this year. I planned on doing one, like just sticking to one a month. Like I can do that. Well, as you can see, I can't do that because I've only done two. So we missed March, April, May, and June, but we're back. It's July and we're going to catch up. I don't have much I mean, I have a lot, don't get me wrong, um, because I've been doing a lot of spinning because it's Tour de Fleece and um, I'm determined to get a lot of spinning done. But up until Tour de Fleece, I've really not done a lot. Um, in March, I went outside to tend to my garden and just stayed out there <laughs> until it got too hot to be out there. So we are now in what I like to call Florida winter which is when instead of being too cold to be outside and you're inside all cozy with the fire and the heat, it is too hot to be outside and you are hibernating indoors in the air conditioning. <laughs> um, and this is really the time where I do a lot of spinning, which I feel like for some people that's more winter time, but this is my winter because when it's winter in Florida, that's when you want to be outside because it's not sweltering 125 degrees with 100% humidity. Um, okay, so a bit of housekeeping before I get started. Someone had commented and asked if I could not do as many ads. I do not get paid for this channel. This channel is not monetized in any sort of way. This is just me sharing, like I am not a cool YouTuber. <laughs> um, it's just me. I'm new to this. Um, still new to this. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and I don't get paid. I didn't even realize there were ads on my videos. Um, so I Googled it and like to figure out, well, how do I, A, I'm not getting paid, but B, like, why are they, if I'm not getting paid and I'm not monetizing this, why are they there? And I think it's just a YouTube thing. So I watched three different tutorials on how to remove ads from your channel. And there's no, like I, where they show like monetization, like I don't have that. So if there's nothing I can do, I think, no, I don't know. But so I'm assuming that because, so you have to have a certain amount of subscribers to be able to monetize your channel. So I think what it is, is that I don't have enough subscribers to monetize. Therefore, monetization is not an option. Therefore, I can't go in there and turn off monetization. So then there are no ads. Does that make sense? I'm sorry. Um, someone said there was just way too many. I know that's annoying. I hate having to skip those dang ads. They're so frustrating. I think because we're like in a time now where like we stream. I, at least for me, like I don't watch regular TV. We don't even have cable. We just have like Netflix and Disney plus and stuff. So I don't do commercials. So it is, I know it's frustrating. Um, and if I turn, turn them off, I would, I will keep looking into it. But again, like I went through every setting, every like advanced setting. I followed three different tutorials on how to do it. I don't have the option that I can find. That being said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know it sucks. There's probably been an ad that's popped up while I'm talking about ads. I'm sorry. Um, hopefully you enjoy our time together enough where you can just skip them even though it's so, so annoying. All right, so that's all the housekeeping I have. Um, ask me your questions. I um, 
there weren't a ton, there's not a ton of questions, which is great and awesome. Um, but I tend to get it in my head and I'm like, well, no one's asking questions. So no one cares. No one wants to know anything. I have nothing to talk about. So I'm just not going to make a video. Um, which is just in my head. I need to get over it. Uh, so ask your questions if you have them and maybe it's something that we can do a spin and chat and answer some questions. Um, I had really great feedback from, um, the grist video, like spinning, like yarn for a project, like understanding grist and like how to like figure out how much like fiber you need for a project. Um, there's a lot of great feedback, so I'm super happy that helped. Um, it's something that just took a long time for me to wrap my head around. Um, and when I first started spinning like that, I wanted to spin for projects. So I really needed to understand. And once I understood it in the way I explained in that video, like it just clicked for me. So I'm glad it's helping some of you. Okay. Moving on, let's talk about what I did in the months we missed. Really, I spent all my time in my garden and um, growing flowers and setting up different beds and trying to wrap up our homeschooling year. So I homeschool and we were really trying to be done so we could have a summer break, which kind of happened, kind of didn't. Um, we're still trying to, we're working, we're honing in on some skills that really need to be mastered throughout the summer, which they're frustrated about. I don't think they realize I'm frustrated about it too. <laughs> I would like a summer break too, kids. I don't think they know that. They just think I'm a mean mom. Um, but we have to master certain skills. And until that mastery has happened, we will just, I mean, it's not as rigid as during like our school year. Um, there's a lot more free time and whatnot, but we are still uh, with two of them. One is fine. She's done the oldest, um, but she's also the oldest. And the other two were working on some mastery things. Um, and then there was very little, um, very little fiber things done. Very little spinning. I just, by the time I got done doing what I needed to, like, finishing school, getting in the garden, getting things done. Like I came inside. It's not that I needed to relax. Cause like I'll spin in it to relax. Like I was just didn't want to move. <laughs> so I would, you know, like shower, we'd have dinner and I'm like, I'm going to bed. Like, cause I got to get up as soon as the sun comes up and start again. So there wasn't a lot done. Um, I think, yeah, during our spin and chat, if memory serves correctly, I was spinning this. So it's finished and it took months. Um, it's really sad on the wheel. This was peach blush. Uh, it's dyed by and created by LCB. It was a 21 micron merino. And it turned out really great. I love it. And I had spun this to go with these other two that I spun for the satellite shawl. Um, I still need the main color, which will be, I think the Santa Cruz that I've got on the spindles. Um, and these are the, these are similar colors to Andrea's color she used like in the pan, like in, yeah, in her satellite shawl. So that's done. And once I'm done with the Santa Cruz on the spindles, maybe we'll cast that on. If I can finish some other whips first. Um, so I worked on that throughout, you know, March, April. And I don't think that I got that off the wheel until May, which is insane <laughs> that it sat on the wheel that long. I just, again, didn't. I didn't. I'd sit for five minutes and then not sit back down until like a week later and only sit for five minutes and then have something else to do. So it happens. And if you're in that space where you feel like you don't have enough time to spend, eventually you'll come back to it. It's okay. 
Uh, Tour de Fleece is what really brought me back. Like, okay, I have not been spinning. I need to. Tour de Fleece was a perfect time. So I jumped on that. Um, once I finished that and my like mojo for knitting and spinning was still not like kicked in, like I need to make this priority. I decided to go through everything and specifically my knitting and decide what whips am I keeping? What whips am I getting rid of? Um, and so I pulled out my bin. This is my bin of whips. And I just throw everything in here, especially when I'm not working on it. And I've only, I got rid of one and I kept the other two because I don't have a ton of whips. It's too much for my brain. I can only have a couple. Even these are driving me crazy. <laughs> they need to be done. Um, so this is the something bandana. I can't remember. I've talked about it before. Nothing's been knit on it. I think I've gotten maybe four more rows done since February. <laughs> but I love it so much. And I really want to finish it. I just need... It's not even half done. It's a lot of knitting. This is a lot of knitting. Um... It's a lot of knitting and so I just keep not picking it up. Or when I do, like I'll do two rows. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, I want to work on something else. But it's just one big square and then you wear it, you know, like fold it in, a, in half triangle wise and it's like a cute little bandana. So we've still got that. I'm hoping I get motivated to get that finished. I do that. Like I'll do a chunk in the beginning and then it will sit for months. And then I'll be like, okay, I'm finishing it. And then I'll get it done super fast. Anyone else? Or is that just me? The other whip that has, I've not knit on this at all. Doesn't even have the needle tips on is my Stria cardigan. Stria cardigan? Stria? I thought about knitting this out. Knitting this out. Ripping this out because... I just am not picking it up. It's also a lot of knitting. This is half fisherman's rib and it's so much knitting. Um, and I've already, this is, I think the third time I've knit this. Um, I knit it about this far and then realized, I think I cast on too many stitches, ripped it out, knit it again, like about this far, missed a stitch up here, tried dropping down, couldn't figure out half fisherman's rib, ended up having to rip back and restart. Um, and then I knit it, I like split the armholes, knit in like down into the body a bit and ran out of yarn, spun more yarn, same colorway. However, that yarn was much lighter than the original gray. And I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference. So this was the original gray that I spun and this is that same colorway. <laughs> Um, this is Ashford Corydale, um, same like light natural gray, but this is way lighter. And I started, kept knitting and was like, it'll be fine. And got a little bit more into the body and you could really see the difference. Like there was a harsh line. And so I ripped it out and then I'm using this light gray and then the dark one as just like a stripe, but you can't really see it unless you really look. I decided to keep going. I need to spin more yarn. It's why I haven't been knitting on it. I've only got that much of the main color. So I just need to spin the yarn. I have all of it and all the matches. It should be fine. Um, I just need to spin it so I can finish this. And I think I'll really like this cardigan. Um, I have a cardigan. It's, it's knit, but it's like store-bought knit. And I wear it all the time. And it's, while well, it's a drop shoulder and the Stria is a raglan, they have a very similar shaping and style. Um, you know, they're both V and they button, they have the button. Um, I just really like it. So I think, I think once the Stria cardigan is done, I will wear it all the time. I just need to do the things to get it done. Um... Okay, and then, so, what I ripped out. The birds are very loud. Do you hear the birds? The birds are very loud and chatty right now. Um, I 
I ripped out. So I chatted about this. It was like my favorite make. If you want to see a photo, it's on my Instagram, Stitch Vintage. And um, I love it. It was my first, first hand spun sweater. First sweater ever. First sweater out of hand spun. First time knitting stranded color work. I loved it. Um, and I love the colors. However, I frogged the entire thing. <laughs> so sad. It was very sad, but I kept going back and forth. Um, two reasons. The main reason is because this itches me. This is a CVM mohair blend and it is beautiful slight halo on the yarn. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and the pattern called like to hold like mohair. And I was like, this will be perfect. And it was, and it was great. However, I don't think I'm allergic to mohair because I don't get a rash or anything. However, it, it just like crazy. It's so pokey. And when I wore it, I was just constantly like, I can't like, ugh. I feel like I'm choking. It's choking me. It's itching me. Like I was just constantly, I couldn't wear it for long. I tried putting like a shirt underneath. I got like bought a turtleneck to like try to wear under it. Nothing. It was poking through it. So I wasn't, I wasn't wearing it. Also, since it was my first time knitting a sweater and specifically knitting um, the stranded color work, it was very tight. I was, I just was in there really tight with that color work. So the yoke was, was pretty tight which I could have made work. Like it wasn't too tight to where I couldn't wear it or it was uncomfortable. It just, between the two, the yoke was a bit tight and it was itching me. I was like, I'm just not gonna wear this and this urine can be used elsewhere. So I'm saving this for the Illuminate. I will one day soon re-knit it because I loved that sweater. I love, I love the yoke. I love the striping and I love the way this yarn looked knit up in that. This was, um, a combo spin, same colorway. So normally a combo spin is when you take like two different colorways and spin them each to a bobbin and then play them together. This was a combo spin in the aspect of, well, yes, they were the same colorway. They were, um, different fibers. So, I had one Cinder and Smoke that's by Spindelicious on Cormo and then one Cinder and Smoke on BFL. So I spent each of those Cormo to a bobbin, BFL to a bobbin, applied them together. A lot of people ask about like doing that, like using two different fibers. Um, sampling and seeing if you like it would be my tip, but I've yet to find ones that don't work. Again, this is BFL and Cormo, two very different wools, and they made a very beautiful yarn. Um, the Cormo gives it some squish. The BFL gives it a bit of drape. It was just a dreamy yarn. So that's what I have to say about that. I don't know what I'm going to use this for. It's a lot. I have a lot of it because while I had this, and this is what I used for the sweater, I still had a bit of um, pin drafted roving left over. So I spun that on the spindles. So I have all of this and I'm like, it's itchy. I can't wear it. But I was thinking when I was like, I can just make a bunch of socks out of them. Or there's like that cute scrunchy pattern like everyone's making right now. So you do that. But I was thinking, and maybe I'm not thinking this all the way through. I need to think about it some more. But I think it's Andrea Mowry's Alpen Glow. Is that the sweater? It's a newer one. I th was it last year's Rhinebeck? I think it was. Where like the collar is like a different color than everything else. Like it's one color for the collar and it's the same color like around the cuffs. And then that's it. Like so I was thinking I could have like a cozy yarn up here and then the rest because this doesn't bother. It didn't bother me. It didn't itch me anywhere else. Just right here on the neck to about here. So I think that sweater, I could use this yarn for, or I could just make a bunch of socks. I don't know. That's my thoughts. Okay. 
moving on. I also spent a lot of time last year, we chatted a bit about it before, spinning cotton. I love wool, but I love cotton too. Um, I love spinning cotton on my talk lease. There's nothing like it. If you've not spun cotton on Talkley spindles, please try it. <laughs> it is so much fun. Um, the whole time, like I was, and I spun thousands and thousands of yards of cotton last summer and this summer. I think it was like around this time, maybe August. Um, I remember just sitting on the sofa after the kids went to bed, just spinning on my Talkley and looking over at Craig and being like, I love this so much. Like, this is so amazing to me. Um, I just, I, I like it. Anyways, so after I had finished all that cotton, I still have a ton of cotton to spin. But after I spun, I had quite a bit of cotton spun. I was like, I can knit with this. And I had remembered Andrea's Velocore pattern. And I was like, I could knit that with my hand spun cotton. So I cast it on. And I knit about halfway, almost to where we, it was time to um, split. And then I set it down. Like I was gung-ho, I knit on it for like a week or two and got that far and never touched it again. I think I picked it up a few times, but as most people will say, knitting with cotton and most all plant fibers is hard on your hands. There's not a, as much like stretch and give. It's just, it's hard. And I was finding that and I'd pick it up and I'd maybe get halfway through a row and I was just like, my hands don't like this. And I'd set it down and do something else. So I'd been sitting and sitting. I think I, I maybe I chatted about it on here. I don't know, but I was thinking about ripping it out. So when I ripped out the Illuminate and I was like, I'm just going to go for that because it's a lot of, um, that, top takes a lot of yarn. So there's a lot of yarn. I had a lot of cotton. I was like, I can make like a handful of like knit tops, like summer tops. So that's what I did. Well, that's what I planned. I haven't finished any summer tops because I have all these grand ideas, but there's not enough time. <laughs> so this was one of the contrast colors. Um, this is naturally green cotton. Did you know cotton comes in different colors? I didn't until I started spinning cotton. Um, and this is like almost white when you spin it, but then when you finish it, it turns green. It's pretty cool. Um, and then this is the main color and I'm almost done. So I started, this is, I forget who, this pattern's by, but it's the leaf, leaf top, I believe. Um, you knit this side, and then you knit this panel, and then you knit all the back, and then you sew it together. But oh, I love it so much. I do love it. Um, it's just really cute. I think it'll make it for Florida when it's like sweltering outside. I think it'll be super cute. And, um, I still got to do the back. So I cast this on like mid June, I think. Um, this will be the back and it's a fairly fast knit, I think. Um, as long as you are knitting on it. Um, so I recommend it. I like it. I swatched a few different swatches. Um, I went down needle sizes significantly. I can't, Remember, these are my swatches. I have another one somewhere. Um, 3.75 size five, like US. Um, I think that's what it called for originally. Maybe not. Yeah, but I felt it was too open. I don't know, can you see the difference? No, because that's like not finished in the lighting. Anyways, I felt it was too open, so I went down. I don't know what size needles these are because I have bad eyes and it is very hard. Um, oh, come on. 
Um, I think, I think that's what I went down to. And I like the fabric, um, and gauge was spot on, pretty spot on. So also I will say there's a lot of talk, someone somewhere, and I feel like I've heard it quite a bit. There's a lot of talk about wood needles versus metal needles. And someone has put out there in my head, and I don't know who, and if it's you, I'm like, that's fine, that wood needles for like plant fibers are great because plant fibers, cotton, uh, bamboo, like any of those um, are very slippery. And wood can help it, it kind of, helps it, and they're a bit more grabby, right? So um, I thought, well, I made it in it, I did with the Velocor, um, I used the Chow Goo Bamboo Needles, which are great, they're great needles, I highly recommend that set. Um, but I think that's why I was having a hard time knitting the Velocor, because I'm knitting this on metal needles, and it is so much better. Like, while there's no stretch and give to it, it just slides right off. The, like, I don't need it to stretch or anything because it's sliding. So if you've knit with cotton or plant fibers on wood needles and you're like, that's not for me, maybe try metal needles. Uh, that's my tip because I do not have any hand issues. Now, this is a different, like, this is much more open. There's lots of yarn overs and all the things. So that could play into it too. I'm just saying for me, I will use metal needles. Okay, moving on. Oh, one more thing before we get to Tour de Fleas. Um, right before, so the last thing that I had worked on before going out into the garden and never coming back inside, <laughs> was, and I think I chatted about it. Maybe I didn't. I had recorded a few videos, but then I got like lost in the editing and frustrated with the editing and they're still sitting in there to be edited. So maybe I talked about it on one of those that I didn't post, but it was, um, Rachel's year of color. So that's woolen spinning, um, her year of color that her community is doing. Um, I know I've talked about Rachel in here before. I'm just gonna just shout her out again. Um, the Woolen Spinning Community, if you've not joined it, it's an amazing resource. I've learned so much. Um, go back and watch all of, especially if you're new, start at episode one of the Woolen Spinning uh, podcast and just binge through them. I did it and I don't regret it. There's so much like little tidbits of information. Um, and it just, it taught me so much when I first started spinning. Um, the community, there, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of info. It can be a bit more technical, but if you stick with it, all that starts to make sense. Um, but anyways, her Patreon's great. Uh, I, there's different tiers. I think it's just like a few dollars and you get access to the Slack channel, like the Slack community, which is worth every penny. Um, everyone's so kind. There's, they will answer your questions. They're so excited about your projects. Like it's just a really, she's done an amazing job creating a spinning community online, which is hard to do. So and she's so sweet and Rachel, I love so much. Um, anyways, so she decided like it, w the community within the community, like there's like different focuses, like month to month, the year to year, all the things. So she decided our, like that this, this community is going to focus on color this year. And I was not like, I was just whatever, like, I'm just going to spin and do my thing. Um, because it's not like everything that's talked about. There's lots of different things talked about. And that was just one focus as a community we can like come together and talk about. And I was like, I'm not joining that. Um, 
so then the bug hit and I was like, okay, I am joining it. So right before I went out to the garden, I started sampling for Year of Color. And that's where these come into play. So Rachel has, there's tons of information on her podcast. She's talked about it. She's had like other episodes talking about it. Um, so you can find all the information, wool and spinning, go check out her YouTube, um, the Patreon, all of that. So I'm just going to share what I started on and then need to finish. Like the, I've not worked on this since February or March. I can't remember when the last time, but basically year of color is just exploring color and like fiber and how blending different colors affects like the color <laughs> of the finished yarn. Um, and so we made our color wheels and you're taking your three main colors, your primaries. I'm still not good with terminology. And that's these. So we've got, sorry for the crinkling, red, yellow, blue. And these three colors are what have made this. So we start with our primaries, red, yellow, blue. So start with those. Two gram samples is what these are. Are you gonna focus? And then we go into our secondaries and then our tertiaries and we get 12 colors. Oh, I talk about, or I shared, I shared some stories when I was working on this on Instagram. I have them saved to a highlight. Um, if I don't know, you care to kind of see more behind the scenes process of making these. Um, and then these are just little tags so I can know what I did. So, you know, like this is two grams of red, one gram. No, this is not. This is, yeah, one gram red, one gram orange, one gram red, one gram yellow, which is, so if it's orange, it's like 25, 25, 50. Does that make sense? Maybe it doesn't. I'm not going to go into it because this will be like two hours long. Um, basically, I just blended them to create and I used my hand cards. So I took, so I have my scale and I just weighed everything out. So if I was making orange, I was weighing out one gram of red, one gram of yellow, weighed those out, put them on the hand cards, blended them, like did passes back and forth, back and forth until like eyeballed it. Like I didn't count the number of passes. It was just like, okay, this looks like orange now. Like it's pretty well blended. And then I peeled that off. I put it um, in like one strip down my, I don't know if I can get that out, I can't. Um, right here is my blending board. But I like put that down my blending board in one single strip. And then I used my diz to diz off for some roving, spun it. Um, did the bracelet thing, plied it into a two ply and we got all these samples. So, um, this is Ashford Corydale. I, way back when I first started spinning, I got the Ashford Corydale sample packs. I had big plans to use this drum carter and make like colorful bats and all these things. So that's why I got it. I still have a lot of it. So I used what I had which is this bin of little like two ounce sample colors. And ugh, that's what I used. Um, I did have to order more because two ounces is not, is not enough to do all the different um, samples that I needed. So I did order more. Um, so the, this is my warm. So I chose to do warms and cools. So I did warm, red, yellow, blue in a cool red, yellow, blue. Where's my cool? So these are the cool. So you can see difference. Warm, cool. 
Now the thing about the cool is this yellow, I only had, I think there's three yellows. There's like a neon like highlighter yellow and then this yellow and this yellow. So what I found with this yellow, are you gonna focus? is it's not really changing the red it's tinting it like it's lightening the red um the same with the blue like it's lighting lightening it almost like a white one so if you add white you're tinting it like you're changing the tint you probably i'm probably losing you're probably like i don't care about any of this stick with me <laughs> um so i need to find a different yellow for for this um, before I move on to anything else because it's not doing, I, this is not doing what I want it to do. So we set that aside, we'll deal with that later. So we have our color wheel, 12 colors. And from there, we do the tinting, the shading, the toning. So with the tinting, you take each one and you can do it like, I'm going a bit more in in depth. It doesn't have to be this in depth. I just think it's super cool. Sampling to me is my love language. If I could just sample at my wheel, like just have like all the different like fleeces, just little samples and just spin tons of these little samples, I would be so happy. Um, just to see what is this, how is it spinning? What kind of yarn is it making? Um, how many different types of yarns can I make with this one fleece? That's fun for me. Um, but I, I get, maybe it's not fun for you. Okay, so from here we go into tinting. So this is as far as I got before the garden took over my life. We tinted the reds. So that is just adding white. So we go from 100% red 100% white. We go 10% increments. So we're adding 10% more white each time until we get to this one. And this is uh, 95. So it goes 90% white, 10% red, 95% white. Come on, 10% or 5% red, right? Am I saying that? I'm confusing myself. And then 100% white. I do think I need something between those two. That's a pretty big, pretty big difference. I love this. This is fun. If you're at all interested, go check out Rachel's. She talks way more about it, way more in depth. Um, and I'm sure throughout the year, you will see more of this because I've got, we're, we got to add white to all of them. And then we start over again and we do black. So we shade. So we do all the increments of black and then we gotta do our grayscale. So black and white and then brown. And I think that's the tone, adding brown tones it. I don't know, like I only took high school art class. This is, I know like the basics, but not everything. I'm sharing this to say, one, I was not interested in this at all um, when it was first announced. It wasn't until Amanda shared her samples and I, like, we were on a Zoom and um, I got to see, oh, hey, like, the colors really are changing. That's kind of interesting. And then I was like, okay, well, I'll, and then I tried it. And I was like, this is really interesting. And then just moving along and it kind of just took took over. Um all that to say, it has really changed the way I look at hand dyed braids. Just understanding, because when you spin them, there's going to be some, some blending at some point. You know, like I have this braid right here. This is another Spindelicious braid. I have lots. Um, yeah, this is Gladiator. Um, you know, you're going to have, when this is unbraided and then spun up, like you're going to have spots where like the blue blends with this like tan, right? Or this turquoise color blends with this like 
slate grayish blue color. Um, and then what color is that? So there's going to, even if we try to keep the colors uh, separate, there's going to be some blending. Um, and when that blending happens, you get a whole new color. And so hand blending these on the hand cards, adding white, adding black, adding brown to the different colors that have already been blended and just seeing how that changes the colors. It's really allowed me to look at braids and, and know, like have a better idea of what that braid will look like spun up because we've all been there where we've had this beautiful braid and then we spun it and I was like, oh, that didn't turn out like I thought it was going to. Um, so that's been fun. And I mean, are you kidding me? Like, how cute are these little samples? I love them so much. Okay, I also took, so I wanted to see, okay, if I take the warm red and like the cool, cool blue, what color do I get? Um, and that can be compared to where's the warms. So this is red and blue. So this is warm red, cool, warm, warm. And let's see if it will focus. They're very similar, like very similar. And then we did the same with the orange and they're different. This is orange, yes. Okay, so this is the warm red, cool yellow. Oh no, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. This is the cool red with the warm yellow. And this is warm red, warm yellow. And you do get two different colors. focus but they're still very similar um anyways so I played with that and then I didn't do anything all right moving on toward a fleece um we've been spinning a lot oh one last okay we're wrapping up with toward a fleece but one quick last thing I chatted about the Icelandic fleece and cotton. We talked a bit about it. Y'all seem interested for a bit more talk about plant fibers. I don't really think there's much talk about it. So thank you. Um, I'm excited because they are something that interests me for my knitting because I'm in such a warm climate. And I mean, well, I know there may be some of people that I don't know, live where it's never warm. I feel like the majority of us do have warm days in the summer um, where we can wear hand knits that maybe are um, more plant fibers than wool. So they're not a top, maybe. Um, okay, so I haven't really done anything with that Icelandic fleece. I chatted about um, using the hand cards. I do have cotton hand cards. I think that's like 190 TPI. I think they're the Ashford cotton cards, whatever. Like if you search Ashford cotton cards, they'll come up. Um, that's what I was using for blending the cotton in the wool. Um, I kind of set that aside. Like I did all my sampling. I shared it with you guys. And then I started this sampling and like there's just been lots going on. But a couple of weeks ago, right before Tour de Fleece started, um, so like end of June, I was thinking again, um, what can I do? Like I have, I want to do something. I want to figure out like a nice 50, 50 wool cotton blend. And I was looking at just what I had. I was clearing off some bobbins for tour de fleece. And I realized I had some singles of some Cormel that I spun and singles from, cotton that I'd spun and they were just, I was playing with different things. I was sampling. They were just kind of left over. I was like, what if I applied those together? Like I did that with my illuminate sweater with the contrast color. It was the BFL and the Cormo. Like what if I take this Cormo and the cotton and like that would make a 50, 50 yarn. Um, and so I did that. I'm like, 
I already have these spun. It's, it'll be fine. Let's just do it. And so I did. And you guys, I love it. So I spun it and I knit um, this swatch. This is for the Ingrid top. I can't remember who um, published that. It's like on the tip of my tongue. I have so many of her banners. Um, but this is what we got. Um, I really, I really like it. Um, it's like stretchy. Even the yarn itself had some elasticity to it, which I was shocked about. I think it's because the Cormel can be so elastic, so it makes up for it. Um, and it's still wooly, but it's also planty. I don't know. I can't. I don't, I, I, I love it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spin a bunch more cotton. I'm going to spin. I have like a pound of Cormo or more. Um, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to use that yarn to knit this Ingrid top because I really, I really love it. It turned out great. So I still want to play with wool cotton blends. Um, I would just like to upgrade my drum carter. So this is a 72 TPI. Um, I wish I would have went with the 120. If I'm being honest, if you're in the market for a drum carter, you have to know what like you're going to do. This works, the 72 works, and I get amazing bass off of it. It takes a few more passes. So if we're talking about a fine fleece, which I don't really have a lot of fine fleeces, um, you get more naps and whatnot because you have to put it through more times to get it nice and open and curted and all of that. 72 works for what I've done. However, if I want to do cotton and wool, like blended together, I need this. I, it, I tried and it was a disaster and it took days to get all the cotton out of the drum. So I would need a 190. Um, and it's an investment and I only have so much space and I already have this one. So I'm just, I'm struggling with just making that purchase. Um, I keep going back. I do think it'll be worth it because I am so interested in cotton and I do think I would use it a lot, but I already have this and I'm just like, not right now. Maybe I can sell this and then use whatever I get from this to invest then in a higher TPI. I don't know. We'll see. They're just expensive, but they're worth it. This is, I don't regret this purchase. The only thing I regret is that I got a 72. I do wish I had gotten higher. Even like, I think there's a 90. This is a brother drum carter, by the way, which I recommend. They're great. You can also, these are replaceable. But I need the Swift, right? This is the Swift. That's the Swift. This is Swift. That's the drum. I don't know. Anyways, well, no, this is the liquor. Hello. This is the Swift. <laughs> don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, this is the liquor in. I need a higher TPI on this. Um, If I'm going up to 190 on this. So it would just be worth getting a whole new one. And then I can get a whole new one and then I can get the 90 for this and then switch those out. I have big plans, not a big budget, <laughs> big hopes and dreams. Anyways, so that's where I'm at with cotton and wool. And I'm super happy with one ply wool, one ply cotton for a 50-50 yarn. I found it works great. All right, I've already been talking for almost 50 minutes. We have to get on to Tour de Fleece. Okay, so where I'm at with the tour, my goal, maybe we should just like cut it and then come back. No, we're just gonna get it all done now. <laughs> um, and then we'll do like an update once Tour de Fleece is over. So my only goal for Tour de Fleece was to spin as much as I can. Um, 
with the goal being to spin 50 ounces of wool, mainly braids because I have so many. And I, my big goal for this year was to spin through, to get some of this stash de-stashed by spinning it. Um, no plans for anything that I'm spinning. Like I'm just sitting down at the wheel and whatever I feel like spinning is what I'm spinning that braid as. Um, usually like kind of my default, I played around with different things. You know, I tend to spin thinner. So some, like there was one that I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and spin this thicker. Um, practicing my long draw, like there's certain techniques I've, I've been working on, but for the most part, I'm just spinning. Um, and I'm not worrying too much about consistency. Um, if there's anything I've learned through knitting with my hand spun is the knitting hides so much. I mean, for the most part, it doesn't matter if that yarn is super consistent. Um, I mean, it needs to be somewhat consistent. Like we're not going from like an Aran to a lace, like that's not, but if it's like some spots are like a fingering and some are maybe a sport and it kind of shimmies around, that will all work itself in the, out in the knitting as long as we're swatching and making sure we're hitting gauge for the pattern we want and we're getting it, who cares, right? So that's kind of how, where my mindset was going into Tour de Fleece and spinning. Mainly I just wanted to get it all spun. <laughs> I didn't care what it looked like. So I have a few finished yarns. I have spun almost 40 ounces. So we are our day today day 15 and um I have spun 39 ounces I have an ounce that's on the wheel right now the rest of a braid and then from there I kind of thought I've got Santa Cruz on the spindles and um I have like 15 ounces of that left to spin 13 ounces. I can't remember. So it's like, okay, well, when I'm done plying all of this, I'll just move on to the spindles. The thing is spindling takes a lot longer. So I don't know if I'll hit that 50. So I may grab a couple more braids and throw on the wheel. We'll see once this is all plied. So finished yarns. First up, I have, ooh, no, we'll just do that. Okay, this is, I've got my spinning journal here, which I've chatted about. Um, they just, focus, it's backwards for you, I think, but I put my singles on there. So as I'm spinning, like I can see, am I staying consistent? My ply back's there, so I can say, am I, is my twist consistent? All of that. Again, I'm not a very like critical spinner. Like I'm not like, it needs to be perfect in, I'm counting my treadles. I don't do that. Spinning's fun for me right now. Um, okay. So what? I don't remember. Okay. So this braid, it was two braids. Um, and it was from Wolfine and I loved it. Um, she called this her experiment 009. It is 80% South American wool, 20% viscose, viscose. Um, and it was like a main, the fiber was gray, I believe it's a gray fiber. And then she dyed it with like purples and, um, like a limey green yellow. Anyways, these are the three skeins I got from it. It is not perfect. I was trying to spin thicker with this. It's a three ply. I believe I spun this long draw. Yes, I spun this long draw trying to go for a thicker yarn. I got a very thick yarn. Um, this is like almost an ear and weight, right? I have my little thing right here. Yeah. Heavy DK light Aaron is what I would categorize this yarn as. There are some spots that are definitely more of not a DK weight. 
Um, but long draw is something I'm honing in on, trying to work, trying to get better at that with them more consistent and this helped. Um, also I don't always need sport weight yarn to spin. Um, so I think I got almost 400 yards out of eight ounces. So very heavy yarn. I think it'll make a nice hat or hats. So we did that. I also finished half of this combo spin. I had none of this is finished, finished. Like it's plied, but I've not soaked it yet. I've not set the twist. This was, let's go back. Sorry, I'm shaking. I should probably move that off the table. Okay, this is one ply um, spring fever on Targi dyed by Wee Chickadee and one ply of wisp on Polworth again dyed by Wee Chickadee. Um, I have the, this fiber, um, on Instagram. Like if you want to see the two different ones, how they looked before they were spun. And this is the finished and I still have, so this is half of it. Well, a little less than half of it. And I still have, um, these two bobbins to spin or apply. Okay. Last finished yarn so far is this. Again, I have this fiber as a photo on Instagram. Um, and this, what was this called? Duskwood by Wolfine and it is dyed on Falkland. Um, I spun this over the fold. So it was a braid of Falkland and I was just, I just like ripped out a chunk and spun over the fold for a woolen and I really love it. Um, I love spinning over the fold. It's something that I sucked at and I couldn't figure out until I started spinning on support spindles. Support spindles really is long draw. Like as you're spinning, like you are honing in on your long draw. Um, and then once I got that down on the spindles, spinning long draw, over, like over the fold on the wheel just was easier. Now it's a little weird <laughs> because on my spindles, I flick with my right hand and I, my fiber is in my left hand. So I'm drafting out this way. Like that is how I spin on my support spindles on my wheel. I'm drafting out with the opposite. So I hold, well, I don't really hold. Like I kind of, if I need resistance, I'll kind of pinch. Um, but my fiber hand is my right hand. And I was like, well, maybe I can switch. And I tried and it did not feel natural at the wheel, which isn't that weird. Does anyone else do both like support spindle and long draw at the wheel? Like, do you use the same hand for both? Cause I don't. And I think that's odd, right? <laughs> you would think it would be easier. Um, anyways. Okay. So that's this. I, and then I have an ounce left. I'm halfway through it for the last of the singles to then finish. Cause it, I had two four ounce braids and, um, so that makes eight ounces for this. Um, okay. And then there was just bobbins. So like I said, this is that combo spin. So we got to apply it up and there was a lot more yellow in one of the braids. It was mainly green. One had more yellow, one had more browns. So again, you can see those two braids on Instagram and I'm sure I'll share like photos of all this finish too. Okay. This is, oh, it's right there. Oh, I'm going to knock the table. Okay. This is, I don't know how to pronounce this. This is dyed by Spindelicious. It's Dalkis, Dalkis Noir. Um, and it is on her Big Cozy Sock Blend, which is 80% Targi, 10% Bamboo, 10% Tessa Silk. Um, so I chatted with her a bit um, when she was like, I want to bring in like a sock fiber, like for people to spin specifically for socks. It's cozy, but also strong. And 
all the things. So we chatted about it. She chose this because the Targi will have a lot of like bounce and spring elasticity. Um, but then the bamboo and the silk will have like the strength that socks need so they don't get holes. So that is why she chose this blend as her sock base. And I don't know what, if I'm going to make socks or what I'm going to make. Um, you can really see if I can cover my eyeballs so it would focus on, oh, come on, <laughs> on this. Um, so it's very shiny that silk and bamboo gives it, a, there's a lot of luster in this. I'm excited to see what it looks like plied up and, um, finished. I think it would be really pretty. Also by Spin Delicious, there's the theme here, um, is we spin this. Um, this is blushuous. I love this colorway. Um, and this was spun, let's flip the page, on her Spin Skinny, which is a superwash merino. I'm not a fan of superwash for the most part. Um, it's just, it's not as, a, like, I like a, like, squishy elastic yarn. Like, those are my favorite woolen spun even better. Um, and superwash tends to be very lack, lack of lackadaisical. Nope, that's not, that's not the word I'm looking for. Just like blah. I will say Spin Delicious, Spin Skinny, Superwash Merino is not like any other Superwash Merino I've, I've spun. Um, I've spun a few of her Superwash. It is, um, very springy and elastic and nice. Don't ask me why or how. I don't know where she gets it from. All I'm saying is if you've yet to, if, if you're me, like if you've spun super wash and you're like, no, this isn't for me, maybe, and you want to give hers a try because it's really good. Um, so we're going to do a chain ply on this. I want a three ply and I'm just going to chain ply it. I like chain ply. Chain ply is so fast for me. It's the first way I learned how to ply. I, I didn't do like a two ply or a three ply, like traditional. I just chain plied everything. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know. I just thought that's what you're supposed to do. Um, okay. And then we have, it drives me nuts when they don't stick. <laughs> okay. Stay. Come on. And like pop out. So this is color 119. Um, this is Banshee uh, Fiber Arts. Yes, Banshee, somewhere like Fiber Studio, Fiber Arts, I never know. Banshee Fiber Arts, and she numbers her colorways. Like you don't get fancy fun names. So this is 119. This is 80% pole worth, 15% uh, Tessa Silk. It was not my favorite to spin, um, but we did it and we got it done. I'm not, Polworth is not my favorite. Maybe it's because every time I spin Polworth, it's always up with silk. Like, I don't know why. I don't think I've ever spun just Polworth. I may have, but I'm pretty sure it's always had at least 10% silk in it. And I'm not a big silk fan. Like I can spin it and it's fine. It's just, I really love the bouncy, springy, squishy wool. Um, and silk is not that. So this is going to be a three ply. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with that. We will see when we see the finished yarn. And the last one is M Mesa. This is popping off. Bobbins. Um, stay. What is this? I was trying to spin thicker with this for a two ply. We'll see what the finished yarn is. So this is, uh, this will be a good sock yarn because it is 80% 
Superwash BFL and 20% nylon. Um, this was a pretty easy spin, I feel. Um, again, usually Superwash isn't not a huge fan, um, but this spun pretty easily. And that's that. That is what I've done. Um, these are all rewound onto storage bobbins. I want to say these are the, the, yeah, they are, right? Yeah, the Leclerc. That's how you say that, Leclerc. These are the Leclerc storage bobbins. They're like the super skinny ones. Um, I have both. I have mostly these. See, they're skinny. These are leftover singles. They're like skinny. Beep. Cover my eyeballs. Maybe. Um, I also have these ones, which are the Claire too, aren't they? Yes. So then like this size. Um, I like these. If I'm being honest, I just think they're super cute. <laughs> um, why am I rewinding? Do you rewind? There's a lot to talk about it. Um, uh, my opinion, I, you don't have to, um, I'm not a super technical spinner. So the only reason why I rewind on two bobbins is because I only have three bobbins for my wheel. So if I'm working on multiple different spins, multiple projects, different things, and I want like, okay, I'm done with this spin. I want to do something else. My wheels are very easy. I have the Spin Illusion Echo. It's very easy to pop that bobbin off. Like there's no like, threading and like all this nonsense. It's just, I think I walked you through my wheel. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. Maybe that's a video I didn't post, but, um, it's super easy. Just pop that off and throw a different bobbin on. So, um, that's that. I wanted to spin all the singles I could. I would have content, like continued spinning if I had enough bobbins to hold everything, but I ran out of storage bobbins. So then I had to ply yarn to finish that, clear up some bobbins to then spin more. So that's why there's finished yarns. Um, as far as like, like if you're spinning a very worsted yarn and you're like, so you're spinning, 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 right? And we're smoothing, smoothing towards us. And then if we don't rewind those, we just throw those on uh, our lace cake and ply it. Now we're gonna be smoothing our ply in the opposite direction. Therefore, we're roughing up some things. Does it matter? Yes and no. I mean, you'll have to try for yourself. See if you notice a difference. Some people can notice a difference and they say they can notice a difference. Do I notice a difference? Not very much, but also I'm not a very heavy worsted spinner. Like I like, um, I'm, I'm not like squeezing out all the air and smoothing everything down. That's not the yarn I'm going for. It's not the yarn I'm knitting with. So it's not what I spin. Um, if that's what you're wanting, it's a very smooth uh, finish yarn, then you're going to want to rewind. Um, as for resting, these are rested, yes. Do we have to rest before we ply? No, we don't. I do not think it matters. <laughs> Take that with a grain of salt. Um, my bobbins rest because I don't have the time. Um, I have had a bobbin sitting for weeks and then you know like because I've done like one ply and it's just I finish it and it's I rewound it and it's just sitting there and then I'll sit down and I'll just spin through that other ply like that other bobbin and I'll rewind that and then I will immediately ply those together and it is fine so having like one super rested and one highly energized I've not found it makes a difference. Um, now if like the only way I would allow the singles to just sit and rest is if I was just doing singles. Um, because you have to kind of felt those singles a bit to finish them so they don't just like fall apart. So when I go to like skein it up, 
I would allow those to sit, get a bit of the energy out before I go to skein it up. That's the only way or reason I personally have to allow things to rest. That's it. That's all we got. I have um, the rest of this on the wheel. I've got singles right there and then singles to spin. And then we're going to apply that. And then we're going to get all of these plied up. So the next time you see me, hopefully, let's hope, it's day 15, Tour de Fleece goes to the 23rd, and then there's the Tour, tour de Femmes, is that it? Um, so I plan on just all of July. That's my plan. Um, I would like these to be done and plied by Tour de Fleece, but I would like to have everything done by August 1st, because that the 31st. July 31st is when it's all wraps up. Tour de Fleece, Tour de Femmes, all of the things. And that's all I've been working on. So I hope you enjoyed our time together. And I didn't really talk about new things. So I don't know if you learned anything. Maybe you did. Maybe you'll join in on the Year of Color. Maybe that interests you. Maybe that bored you to death. I hope it didn't because it's really fun. You do need hand cards. I think some people use poems. Um, Rachel used her drum carter to blend everything. Um, I think it's fun. You should, you should join and see how mixing these different colors changes. How you create new colors. I'm really excited. Um, to work on on the shades to to get through the white to get through all the tinting and then move on to the shades because the shades are some of my favorite colors um like those moody those deep moody more earthy tones those are what I love okay I have been sitting cross-legged for a while <laughs> and I'm getting old so my bones don't work like they used to and things are asleep. But I have to move to hit stop <laughs> on my phone. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed our time. I missed doing this and chatting with you guys. Um, and I'm very sorry about all of the ads that you've had to sit through. Eventually, one day, I will figure out how to shut them off because YouTube's not paying me for them so they don't get to put them on my video. <laughs> Actually, they get to do whatever they want and I have no say so because I can't figure out how to remove them. Um, anyways, I hope you are enjoying your Tour de Fleece. Um, I would love to hear about what you're spinning, what you're working on, what your goals for Tour de Fleece. Are you hitting them? Are you close? Did life happen? Life happens, you know? I had a goal of posting one of these videos every month and it is the seventh month and this, this is my third video. So don't feel bad, but we just stick with it and we keep going. All right. You guys have fun spinning and knitting and, um, posting all the things on Instagram because you guys inspire me <laughs> to do the things. Have a good rest of the weekend.